This is the this is what I mentioned in the beginning of the episode that I was saving this for the last. You said, honestly, when I think about how many millions of young men, say women, do that don't ever have anyone to take an interest in them, it's almost embarrassing for me to think about how many did take an interest in me. Can you tell us maybe a couple of key experiences in your life where you didn't believe in yourself, but someone else did and how that shaped your life for the better? Well, you're going to make me cry now. You're going to make uh, me cry. So I, you know, my, my parents divorced when I was eight years old. My mom is from Georgia. So she moved down to Georgia with us. There was four kids. And, you know, so my dad was 1200 miles away and one thing I love to do is play baseball, still do. I go every year to Florida and play for a week. And and uh, so I had a little league coach who must have seen that, you know, I didn't have a dad around. And he, he would always make time. He didn't have any kids of his own. I don't think he was very old at the time either, maybe 25. But he took the time to pick me up, uh, take me to practice, take me home, take me to games. That sort of thing. And and I, I remember one day he said to me, uh, or he said to the group, he got everybody together and he said, look, I need hustle. I need hustle. I need effort from you guys. I need hustle. And, uh, you know, a bunch of 10, 12 year old nod heads. We all leave. I jump in his truck and we're going down the road and he had little dots on the truck, the predecessor of Nissan. And he hands me the scorebook. And he opens it up to a certain page, and it's the batting. He, he, when he had us in the group, he said, that even the guy with the highest batting average on the team needs to give more. And I opened the book up, and he had the batting averages listed there, and I was the highest batting average on the team. And I said, whoa, I have let him down tremendously. <laughs> and he, he didn't want me to feel that way, but he wanted me to know, and the rest of us, that we could do more. Mm-hmm. And just the way he was with me uh, was something that I'll never forget. And uh, I wrote him a letter about 20 years ago, and and he returned it in kind. And then about 10 years ago, I was down in Georgia, and I, I made a point to go out to lunch with him. And uh, and I told him, I'm sitting across the table from him, he's the same looking guy, little handlebar mustache, you know, blue eyes. And just, uh, you know, some a few wrinkles in his face, crow's feet. And I said, I just want you to know, you know, what you did for me. And the only place I ever felt safe was on that baseball field. Mm-hmm. And he said to me, that makes, that makes us both better men. And just that experience. And when I, when we were walking away, uh, I said, I'm not going to let it stop. His name is Dewey. I said, Dewey, I'm not going to let it stop. He said, I know you. And that's part of what energizes me to do the things I do. Now, that's a long, took a long time to tell that story. Um, but, I, you know, in the business, uh, when I was young in the business, I had a number of superintendents take to me was an undue interest in, in me. Uh, one, I still maintain contact with uh, when I was 20 years old. I was working as a trainee foreman and he, uh, he took me aside and I, I wasn't, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I wasn't doing great work. And he took me aside and he said, I'm going to tell you right now, your father, when he sent you out here, he said, if he's not kicking ass, fire him. He said, I'm going to tell you right now, I need to give you a warning because I need more out of you. And it was kind of that same conversation from, eight, 10 years before. And, uh, and I mean, it was like that I changed and somebody to, to actually sit down, you know, and, and there, there's some barriers to telling the boss's son he's fired, right? There's, there's some risk there. Uh, mm-hmm. but for him to be willing to take that risk and talk to me like that. And, and then, you know, there are others as well, but just th- that's what I mean that I had so many people take, take an interest in me. And and I just know how many millions, like I can go back to my childhood. I can look around on that team that I was on and I can go, he didn't have one. He didn't have one. He didn't have one. And I, I don't know what it is 
about me that that uh, made people take an interest, but I sure I'm sure I'm thankful and I'm sure going to pay it forward. Herb, that's exactly how I feel. I, I've never done this, but I got to grab something really quick and I want to show you something. This napkin right here. Yeah. Changed my life. I had a mentor take a chance on me a couple of years ago. I was pretty lost. I wanted to build a company. Um, I had two weeks to tell him that I was going to move to a brand new city and sleep on his office couch and I'd have a month to figure it out. Um, I remind him about this pretty frequently, but I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for saving that napkin. Yeah. Yeah, I've still got That's one of my most prized possessions that I have is a bar napkin and an agreement that he would become an advisor and a mentor to me. But every time that I think about the work ethic or where I came from, I always remember yeah. a napkin because I told my family when I left my hometown that I was not going to come back. And it was for all due respect, but I needed to go out and build my life and take yeah. a chance on myself because it was someone else that had a belief in me before I even saw it in myself. And that was the coolest thing, right? when Before we started the podcast, when I read that statement, I was like, wow, Herb and I have never met each other before, but we share something that's so deep rooted in who we are as individuals. Yeah. And I thought that was the coolest thing. And as a result, I mean, you're, you two are paying forward in spades, right? I mean, just the things you're doing, uh, you know, the Hammer platform and, and this podcast, just what a great way to to encourage others to to maybe moderate their mindset a little bit around just around grace mm -hmm. you know around a different way to think about people you know instead of thinking about an individual as the one who's late the one who's not working hard thinking about him as the human that has a soul that i would like to find a way to find a direction for him.